welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. you. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy. I'm your host, and this is episode 13. So now we're into the second week of 2019. And this is the time of year where everybody is turning their life upside down, changing everything 180 degrees, promising themselves all kinds of things because they really want to achieve that resolution or that goal that's been on their list for a long time. Last week, I talked about how many of us remain in confusion, confusion about why we haven't gotten this thing, confusion about how to get it, confusion about where the time goes and why we don't get it. And my goal this month is to talk about how to get clarity, how to get out of confusion and into clarity. Based on all the work that I've done as an accountability and productivity coach with my clients, and I work with private clients and I work with group clients, but all of them have one thing in common, and it's that they don't have enough time. Most of them don't know where their time goes. They're confused by why they can't get more done, and they really beat themselves up over this. So today I wanted to talk about the four general areas where my client's time goes, and I bet this is going to resonate with you. I'm going to dive deep into one of them, the place where most of their time goes. And over the course of the next few months, I'll be digging in deeper to the other areas. But let's start with the four general areas of where my client's time goes. Number one, they get caught up in taking care of other people's bullshit. I'm going to explain that one a lot more deeply today. Number two, time just seems to disappear when they are spending a lot of time creating the conditions for something to be perfect before they actually start it. Number three is procrastinating doing the thing because they think it'll take too much time or be too hard or too uncomfortable. And number four is they waste time and tell themselves it's relaxation. Now, all four of these areas are super interesting and we can solve for all four of them. But today, I'm only talking about the confusion of getting caught up in other people's bullshit. I call this OPB. Now, it all sounds pretty simple, right? Like there's four areas where our time goes, but in each area, confusion is happening. And mostly, we remain in confusion because we choose to ignore what's really happening. Today, I want to make some things really clear for you. Here's an example. Most of my clients, the people who tend to come to me, have spent a lot of time getting caught up in OPB. Now, what does this mean? This means that my client, I'm going to just refer to her as a she in general. She takes on junk that's not her responsibility. Where does confusion come in? Well, it comes in because she creates a lot of reasons and excuses why taking on stuff that's not hers is absolutely necessary. My clients will say things like, oh no, I have to help her. Without my help, she'll be screwed. And I want you to know that I used to do this too. This used to be my big time suck where I would help other people because they couldn't help themselves. Um, Some other things that my clients say is like, oh, no, 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 I'm his mom. I have to bring him his tuba, his sneakers, his lunch, fill in the blank because he can't practice, eat lunch or go go to track practice without it. So I want you to know that in every single one of these scenarios, Clients are bullshitting themselves because they have come to believe that they must engage the other people's bullshit in order to feel valued or important. I'm going to say right here, I know this is really hard. I know this is hard to admit. And if this sounds like you, you might, your feathers might be ruffling and you might be like, what is she talking about? But I want you to know I'm coming at you with this from a place of love because once you can see it and you can get it under control, your time 
comes back to you in ways that you can't even imagine. But my clients, before we really do this work, they're confused about how this could happen because to them, their whole sense of being is like showing up for other people and helping other people. Who am I if I'm not doing for other people? It's very confusing. And what we work on together are boundaries about how to help other people and take care of other people without completely losing ourselves, our energy, and our time. So one of the things that I really try to do with people who spend a lot of time in the OPB zone is to think about what actually does help other people, how to get not confused or clear about what our roles and responsibility actually are when we're trying to be servers, helpers, givers, people who come with an open heart. This is a complicated subject. Now, you you might be thinking, geez, I thought we were just talking about time management today. But the thing about time management is it's not about a new planner. It's not about the perfect calendar. It's about mindset. And this is particularly complicated when we're talking about OPB because we're talking about relationships and emotions and expectations and judgments. And it's super easy to remain in confusion about how our behavior in this zone eats up our time. So when I ask my clients how much time and energy taking care of other people's bullshit actually takes up, they often look at me first with despair. They'll say, oh my God, hours. And then they kind of back off because they realize they've admitted something that's kind of hard. So I'll push them to clarify, you know, well, are these things important to you? And then they start to hem and haw. They're like, oh, yes, yes, yes. It's very important for me to show up and make sure that I give everybody everything they need. They don't want to admit that they're spending time doing stuff that's not important to them. They're, they're, it's really hard to admit that we're doing stuff that's urgent for somebody else or important to somebody else, but not necessarily to us. When I push them, they'll, they'll kind of look at me sometimes with a withering face and they'll say, Jen, it's, it's more complicated than that. And I know that it's complicated to them for sure. Their mind is making it more complicated. Their mind keeps them confused about boundaries. Their mind keeps them confused about how their role of always stepping in to help somebody get out of a jam actually keeps that person stuck too. And this is really complicated stuff. This is exactly the stuff that I unwind and work through with my clients in our group program, because this is not easy. It's really hard to reestablish boundaries and understand the difference between helping and overdoing and stepping in and keeping someone else from showing up the way they need to show up. So with support, clients can overcome their confusion around this topic, but I want you to know this is not easy to do on your own. However, when you can do this, and I promise you, you can do this. And what I mean by that is creating boundaries, learning scripts that move you out of this role of overtaking care up to the point where you're completely depleted. When my clients can do this, they find clarity and much, much, much more time and energy in their day to do the things that make them feel filled up. So if you're looking for more time in your day, and frankly, who isn't? Confusion might be at the very core of your problem. Are you confused about where your time goes? Are you confused about why at the end of the week you feel so exhausted? And are you confused about why you just can't get it all done and it seems that everybody else can? I'll tell you, I was. And by the time most of my clients come to me, they're at the end of their rope, absolutely exhausted. Now this might be you. Is it difficult for you to make a decision about what you want for yourself? Is it easier to make decisions about what other people need? And is it easier to swoop in and help other people before it is to make decisions about what you want for yourself? If you're finding it's difficult to make your goals and achieve them, then you're probably constantly overwhelmed feeling exhausted and anxious. So I want you to know here are the three steps that I take my clients through to overcome this confusion. Number one is awareness. I always start with awareness. You have to name the problem because until you do, you can't solve it. Here's an example I used to tell my high school and college students. 
you have a complaint about me or the class or the assignment, you need to communicate it. How in the world can I help you if I don't know what's wrong? I mean, we do this in our relationships all the time too. Maybe you've been confused at some point about why your friend or child or partner is unhappy with you. If we don't tell others, then we can't be clear with them. And if we don't notice it ourselves, then we're not being clear with ourselves. So if you keep yourself unaware or in confusion, it's because it feels easier. I'll tell you, awareness is not easy. Hearing students tell me that they didn't like my approach to something or hearing my son tell me how his feelings are hurt, that's not my favorite. I mean, it's painful or uncomfortable. But once I hear it, then I can do something about it. I want you to know that you can do this for yourself. Get aware of what's really going on. Where is your time going? Where are you feeling overwhelmed and what don't you want to do anymore? Admitting it is the very first step. Say it out loud. You will not die. I promise. The second step is to take a baby step risk. And I want you to know that whatever it is you need to change to overcome this confusion or this overdoing that you're doing, I promise you, you will not want to make a 180 degree shift. Because overhauling your life usually feels unsustainable. So I want you instead to take a baby step forward. In the example I've been using today, the one about like other people stealing your time or you giving too much time away to other people's nonsense, I want you to take a baby step. I want you to just say no to something. Provide a natural consequence and do it without apology or fanfare or excuses or over explaining. A simple, oh, I can't make that happen today, period, goes a long way. Stop trying to solve everyone else's problems and watch the clarity come back into your life. An example that I hear a lot are from female clients who get calls from their kids. Now, their kids have forgotten something. And my son sometimes will forget a snack or he'll forget something that he needs. And he has learned that I'll say, I can't make that happen today. And he he survives, you guys. He never starves. And he always learns a natural consequence. Sometimes he has to eat food that somebody else brought him or play in a different kind of sneaker for gym. I mean, this is not life-threatening stuff, you guys. Are you lighting yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm? If you are. It is sucking the life out of you and you're confused about what the actual boundaries are and how it's affecting you, but how it's also affecting the other person. Every time I tell my son, I can't make that happen when it's really something not that big of a deal, he learns how to be more responsible for himself. So I ask you the second step, take a baby step risk, learn what's important to you, get really clear on that your confusion will disappear and then you'll get so much more time and energy back into your day. The last step for today to deal with getting more time is to assess what's working. Once you took the baby step, what actually worked for you? Now, it's okay if the other person was not happy. People are not happy all the time. We are not wired to be happy all the time. People are allowed to be disappointed or upset or unhappy but what worked for you? Did you get more time back? Did you feel clearer and less confused? Remember, these are baby steps. Did the other person learn a natural consequence? Most importantly, did you learn that you can respect your own time? You've got to notice this stuff or you're going to fall back into old patterns. So don't forget step three, assess what's working. I want you to know that January is your month to overcome confusion because it's vital to your vitality and you can't achieve your goals if you feel depleted and wrung out. Are you using being confused, which is making you overwhelmed and anxious as an excuse? Obviously only you can answer this question, but this podcast is designed to help you get back more time so you can clear your mind and achieve your goals. That is my number one mission on this earth is to get women achieving their goals. When you achieve your goal, you're fulfilled, you're happy, you're better for your partner, you're better for your family, you're better for your colleagues and your boss and your employees. 
You have to fill yourself up. And my job is to help you do that. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So please leave me a review, letting me know what you think, because the more women who hear this stuff, the more women we have on the planet who are achieving their goals. So this week, I'm just asking you, will you please give me a review or share this with somebody who you really think could use it? I'd appreciate it so much. And if you have any questions, want to reach out to me, I answer every single question and I'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment, leave a review or share this with a friend. I'll see you next week when I'm introducing you to a woman who overcame confusion, left being a teacher, which like nobody does to open up her own very, very successful business. I'm going to tell you how she overcame. Actually, she's going to tell you how she overcame confusion in our interview. And her name is Colleen Camiso. And I'm excited for you to meet her next week. Tune back in. If you want to know how a teacher overcame confusion and started her own business. I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.